next time the new member comes in, you know who is going to be the evaluator. I will have the courage to sign it as soon as the new member comes. An event that creates or created fear, Mr. Gary Sharp. An event that created or creates fear. I should have been scared to death. I almost was. The scene, the Colorado River. We're rafting it. We are at record high water. The only time in existence has ever been this high. We're about to go through the largest rapid on the river in small rafts only 15 feet long on a private trip with some friends. I and some other fellow rafting guides had gotten our own trip together. Yes, that's right. I was a professional whitewater rafting guide at one time. This time, no passers, just fun. Unfortunately, the rapid, being the biggest on the river, also was the wildest with the biggest water flow ever. Very large commercial rafts went in front of me, 35 feet long, three of them strapped together, huge rafts. They had been flipped over and over and over, like a child's rubber ducky in a bathtub. One man was killed. The next boat to go through the rapid, they were my group. I should have been petrified. I almost was. That was probably the one time in my life when I was the closest to a situation where I could have been killed. How everything worked out will be the subject of a speech to be given later. A historic person that you admire and why? Postmaster Susan Schultz? A historic person that you admire and why? facing one's fears. I, I was a scuba diver for 14 years. I dived in every dive place destination around the world. So people think that's a really big deal. Wow, I'm really brave. I can do all that rapid waters, 150 feet diving in wrecks. Wow, fearless. But the reality is, I had to face my fear every time I looked in that water and knew I had to jump in. My heart would be pounding. I would get shivers and shakes. Sometimes I'd throw up. I was really scared. But I went in because I wasn't going to miss that opportunity. And also, when you are shaking with fear and you're cold and scared, guess what? You lose weight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I could be on dive trips well, and you eat funny. five meals a day. Well. And I would lose five pounds. Well. So I guess you'd say it was kind of easy to face my fears. Five pounds just for one day out of diving 150 feet. I gather what Stu Susan admired was scuba diving the most. Three items on your bucket list 
for you to be bucket list. Postmaster Barry. Madam Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters, I have a lot of items on my bucket list. To narrow it down to just three, it's not going to be easy. But let's jump right in and start with one of them. I want to walk on the Great Wall of China. Mm. Never been to China. Know a little bit about it from studying history in school and reading books, watching movies. But I'd love to go to China and see the Great Wall. It's one of the natural wonders of the world, after all. It's huge. It'd be a great place to make memories, to take photographs, to meet some people. I think that would be fun. I'd also really like to go to Egypt and see the pyramids, another of the great wonders of the world. The pyramids were built at a time when they had hand tools. They didn't have modern construction equipment. And it fascinates me that can they really be as big as they say they are? The third place that would be on my bucket list would be to go to a Super Bowl game. <laughs> I've never been. It doesn't matter what city it's in. It's a sports thing. I like most things that are sports related. Madam What is your greatest strength? Postmaster Duke Richard, what is your greatest strength? <coughs> sales field, for example, you definitely have to be able to persevere. I can remember about three or four years ago, maybe even a little bit longer, I kept calling this client, a prospect actually, in Boca Raton, <clears throat> to convince him to have his Medicare insurance with me. And I would call him, and he wouldn't answer, and I'd leave a message. And I think, I believe I even wrote to his home once, and made a presentation, <clears throat> and he still was holding off. He wasn't making a decision. But I kept calling him, and leaving messages, calling him, and leaving messages, because I hate to go and make a presentation and not get any results. <laughs> <laughs> One day, I got a phone call. He said, you have the tenacity of a bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> said, come on, when can you come over? And we'll sign my wife and I up. So ten tenacity or perseverance. <laughs> Unbounded courage. <laughs> Anybody here ride a bicycle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you get on your bike when you start out? The guess is you put your foot in the pedal, give a shove, and swing your leg over it, right? Yeah. Kind of. Well, when I was 10 years old, all my friends did that. I, on the other hand, would very carefully put the bike beside the curb, swing my leg over with a stable, and very slowly push off. 
And I was humiliated that I was the only kid on the block who just couldn't push off and swing his leg over and zip away. So I have a very clear memory of riding my bike down the hill, going up this side road, and I'm on a downhill ramp, and I had to make a decision. Am I going to do this or not? And I knew if it failed, it was going to hurt. It was going to hurt big time. This is a gravelly road. And I can remember walking back and forth with the bike, screwing up my courage. And finally, I'm going to, it's, it took me 15 minutes to do this, put my foot on the pedal, lean the bike over, because it was a balancing act, lean the bike over. <coughs> it's an emotional moment for me these days. I'm around 10 years old. And I push it off, I swung the leg over. It was the most natural thing in the world. And I thought, what's there to be afraid of? This is a piece of cake. And ever since I've done that, I've always thought about that every time I try something new. Because I see other people doing things, and I always think back to my learning how to ride that bike by myself. If they can do it, so can I. It's just a matter of doing it.